What is real? How do you define real? How do you know you exist? It is intuitively obvious. Intuition is no proof. What concrete evidence do you have that you exist? Hmm. Well, I think, therefore, I am. That's good. That's very good. But how do you know that anything else exists? My sensory apparatus reveals it to me. Ah, right. This is fun. Now, listen. Listen, here's the big question. How do you know that the evidence your sensory apparatus reveals to you is correct? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. What I'm getting at is this. The only experience that is directly available to you is your sensory data. And this sensory data is merely a stream of electrical impulses that stimulates your computing center. In other words, all that I really know about the outside world is relayed to me through my electrical connection. Exactly! Why, that would mean that I really don't know what the outside universe is like at all for certain. That's it! That's it! So we're really like blind people groping around with these feeble little senses to determine what reality is. And make sense of the world only if we base the world on consciousness. World is made of consciousness, world is consciousness, consciousness is the ground of being. Qu quantum physics makes this as clear as they like. If you want to see fear in a quantum physicist's eyes, just mention the words, the measurement problem. The measurement problem is this, an atom only appears in a particular place if you measure it. In other words, an atom is spread out all over the place until a conscious observer decides to look at it. So the act of measurement or observation creates the entire universe. Realize that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration, that we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death, life is only a dream, and we're the imagination of ourselves. And this is exactly what mystics have been trying to tell us for so many years, that, that the world is an illusion and that the real uh, world and universe is a non-physical. Come and see the universe and is made of primal vibrational stuff. And that really tied into my understanding of quantum physics, because in quantum physics we talk about quantum waves, which are vibrations, out of which all matter is eventually, uh, eventually is created or emerges. Atoms are not just unimaginable, they're self-contradictory. They behave both like particles and waves. And it gets weirder. When you're not looking at an atom, it behaves like a spread out wave. But when you look to see where it is, it behaves like a particle. And one of the basic assumptions about of quantum physics is the quantum wave nature of all matter. That matter, uh, unobserved, matter on its own, uh, moves and vibrates in, in, in waves. But waves of what? Are they water waves? Are they sound waves? Are they electrical waves? No, they're actually waves of nothing. But imagine you're doing music. You need silence to be able to cut it. To make music, to make a beat. If you're making reality, you need space to define the reality in between. So space, reality could be just various resolutions, right? Various divisions of space in a fractal structure that space that we believe is empty is not really so empty. It's, it's full of a, of a living essence, of a living material that we're only beginning to understand, number one. And number 
two, the fact, and it is a fact now, that we may have experiences inside of our bodies that influence the world beyond our bodies through the conduit of what's in this space. I mean, if you said to people, um, is that, is that, uh, is that table solid? They say, of course it is, of course it is. Well, it isn't, it can't be, it's made of atoms, right? And, and atoms are not solid, tell me how it does that. Our minds do that by turning vibrational fields into uh, apparently physical objects. spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. There is no spoon? Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends, it is only yourself. Sir John Maddox, editor of the highly respected journal Nature, denounced Sheldrake in a dramatic editorial entitled A Book for Burning. It's unnecessary uh, to introduce magic into the explanation of um, uh, physical and biological phenomena, when in fact uh, there's every likelihood that the continuation of research as it's now practiced will indeed fill all the gaps that Sheldrake draws attention to. You see, Sheldrake's is not a scientific theory. Sheldrake uh, is putting forward magic instead of science. And um, that can be condemned in exactly the language that the popes used to con condemn Galileo. And um, uh, for the same reasons, it is heresy. The bottom line is this. Everything is conscious. Uh, what we call creation is a, 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 like an ocean of infinite energy, um, which is manifesting itself in different forms. The space between things is anything but empty. It is full of a, a living, pulsating essence that is so new, scientists have yet to agree on a single term. Some are calling it a quantum hologram, very technical sounding name. Um, Dr. Edgar Mitchell, the former Apollo astronaut, I've had the honor of sharing the stage with him a number of times. He calls it nature's mind. Stephen Hawking calls it the mind of God. Others simply call it the field. bottom line is this. Everything is conscious. Uh, what we call creation is a, 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 like an ocean of infinite energy. 1944, the father of quantum physics, Max Planck, identified the existence of this field and he called it the matrix. He said, underlying everything that we see, our bodies included, everything we see in the world around us and our bodies, he said, there is the existence of, of what must be a conscious and intelligent mind. This is his language in 1944. He said that this mind is the matrix of all matter, and it's from his work that the movie series uh, began and, and uh, many of the ideas that we have today. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental projection of your digital self.